I own a vation. We out in New Rochelle, I own a vation. Moving with Intel, I own a vation. Now we in the groove, I own a vation. We making money and moves, hey. Hello, I Innovators. Welcome back to the I Innovation Podcast. And today we have a special edition episode with guest co-hosts. I am Lizbeth. And I'm Jerry. And welcome to this week's topic with wellness and mindset for entrepreneurs. We have two very special guests and yeah. Um, yeah, so our special guest this week to discuss wellness and mindset as an entrepreneur, we have Danny Pataki here, who is an adjunct professor at the Heinz Institute for Entrepreneurship and Innovation. And he's also the managing director at Excel 7. And we also have Franco Cabral here, who is the CEO at Inmark Media. So welcome you two. Yeah, welcome guys. Thank you for having us. Great to have you here. Awesome. You guys want to go ahead and just give yourselves um, a bit of introduction for our viewers? Sure. Sure. Um, so my name is Franco Cabral from Inmark Media. I own a marketing agency in Dobbs Ferry here in Westchester County, New York. Um, I've been in the uh, local small to medium sized business marketing space for about 15 years. Uh, recently started my company in April of 2016. Uh, my daughter was my catalyst for that. I have a three-year-old daughter, Sienna, and a son, Adrian, now, who's a year and a half. Uh, and I'm very much excited to be here with you guys today. Awesome, thank you. Thank you. Awesome, yeah, once again, Danny Pataki. Uh, I'm an alum of Iona College, um, and my wife as well, and, and you know some others in the family, like sister-in-law and brother-in-law, so happy to be here. <laughs> and you know, teaching in the Heinz Institute, I think it's a great place, you know, for a lot of students to come through and really experiment with the mindset. So I'm, I'm happy that we're covering a lot of that today. At Excel 7, uh, which is an early stage uh, technology accelerator, we work with a lot of founders, creatives, entrepreneurs to build their companies, uh, to go into market and to generate revenue, mainly in the ESG space, which is environmental, social, and governance. Uh, to try to have some social impact there as well. So once again, great to be here and, and trying to represent you know some of the local community of entrepreneurs as well. Awesome, so we're just gonna go ahead and just roll in with these questions and um, start. So what does it mean to have an entrepreneurial mindset? And is it something that you are born with is, or is it something that you develop over time? Mm -hmm. so. I mean, I'll, I'll start with that. Sure. Okay. Um, <laughs> And this doesn't just come from class. I mean, a lot of the class, by the way, if you're listening, if you're a student, you know, it's not just about, um, you know, the te teaching methodologies or, or you know, the, uh, the approach to the lessons. I, I think the element of play, you know, and, and most people would say creativity, but, you know, I really want to focus on this, this playness um, as an entrepreneur that you really have to have at the center of a, a daily flow and you know there's a lot of tenacity with that and there's a lot of fear and, and encouragement and lots of other feelings and emotions there but you know one thing that I see directly connected to the mindset is if if you approach the problem solving and you approach the the challenges and all the positivity that comes with entrepreneurship too with this sense of playness um, it creates a different type of mindset on how you approach it with teammates and you know with clients and customers and that means anything from you know experimenting with ideas or new projects or new initiatives uh, you know bringing on new new folks to to tackle these these challenges so uh, I think that's one thing that comes to my mind I'd love to so uh, moving in the more the uh, wellness uh, topic of the podcast um, a popular conversation in our world today outside of entrepreneurship is uh, mental health and things like depression. Do you think in like the world of entrepreneurship, it's a busy job, do you think that entrepreneurs are more are more prone to uh, being subjected to things like depression and mental illnesses along that line? I'd like to jump in here. Sure. Um, so, uh, absolutely. Um, the last three years of uh, running a business um, has been some of the most difficult, actually they've been the most difficult years of my life. Um, I've grown the most, uh, but entrepreneurship is lonely. It's, a, it's an experience that you're going through many times alone. And you know, what I mean by that is, you know, as, an, as the leader of an organization, I can't go in to tell my employees necessarily how difficult today is, or my fears, or whether I know if we're gonna you know, make payroll this week, or the stresses, the anxieties, so then I hold that in. 
and when you hold it in and you don't if you don't have the outlets if you don't have the support mm -hmm. at home if you don't have the you know other places where you can communicate you're bottling it inside and you're holding it in and you find a way to deal some way you have to deal with that pain that comes with that and you know for me there was a moment in time where I was drinking more than I was happy with. Um, you know, I was drinking six days a week, you know, two, three drinks a night. Um, was never getting bombed any one night, but I was taking the edge off, as is, as is so common in, in our culture and society, because I didn't know what to do with that pain. So it was a slippery, it could have been a very slippery slope had I not been more self-aware or had different tools and systems to find a way to deal with that. Um, but I think it's, a, it's absolutely a very lonely, scary ride, which is why the callousing of your mind and other things you do to develop a tougher mindset and have outlets to uh, people to talk to is, is so, so important from my perspective. Mm. Yeah, I think it's uh, something that as a society we need to think a, a whole bunch more about. Um, I think that we need, you know, always need new strategies and, and institutes and, and programs to help out. I mean, to add layers on top of this, you never know sort of who else is coming to the table if you're a veteran you know with PTSD as an entrepreneur because there's a lot of veteran entrepreneurial initiatives out there um, you know there there could even be um, you know if there's there are some specific kind of areas but if you're a woman and, and there's been you know some sexual abuse or, or other issues in the past you know and I think all those things are really important to you know for the individual to do some things too but on the other side there should be tentacles and sort of avenues for the entrepreneurs to you know reach out and it's it's not always easy I think in my experience for the entrepreneur to do that themselves um, because the the weight is always on your shoulders and you have to carry forward and you're you're at the tip of the spear and you're carrying the flag and you're taking care of the family and you're producing so you know and I think um, changing that mindset to the first question of like it really is a team and it's we and there's other people out there um, that's super super important and then I think there's also the special cases like I men mentioned the veterans or, or whatnot that adds some other layers to that so I'd like to add something to that. So, you know, you mentioned the, the veterans or situations from the past. Um, one of, and it, it just connected with me because one of the things that I found from entrepreneurship is entrepreneurship will expose every weakness you have. Like a wave. Yeah, and, and it like it's like almost like when the ocean goes out, you know, at, at, a, at low tide, you see all the cracks on the bottom of the floor. Entrepreneurship is like that, which is why this topic of mindset is so valuable because if you don't have a strong mindset or aware and have the avenues like you know Danny's talking about, you're going to be exposed. And that's, you know, it's there's nothing bad with that. There's beauty that comes with being exposed because that's your biggest opportunities are found in your biggest weaknesses. But if you don't know what to do, you know, it's a it's a it's a process that definitely creates exposure for yourself and you know that's where I think a lot of the depression can come from if you don't know what to do with it because now you've uncovered all these things about you that you didn't really know um, and you, you know it's a scary place you know it can be a scary place if you don't have you know those tentacles like so you two talked about before you know when we talked on like the struggles of entrepreneurship and then your daily activities but um, would you mind going into more detail like how do you two cope with like some adversities or um, failures that you may have experienced throughout your career? Like, what are some strategies that you used to like cope with it and like move on and like continue on? Yeah, so I mean, I'll, I'll start with one thing that also becomes a burden through the coping process, which is, you know, I'm, I'm someone that sometimes, um, you know, sort of wears things on my sleeve, right, to use that term. And mm -hmm. so, you know, Kimberly, uh, you know, my wife, uh, we've been together for, you know, 17, 18 years. We met here freshman college, you know, freshman year of college. Um, she was a, a track star and I was playing baseball and that was it. I saw, so, you know, um, but anyway, you know, <clears throat> I bring things home with me and, you know, sometimes I probably talk too much about it during my coping process. But at least the communication that we both appreciate is I am in high communication because I did a couple things in the past where, you know, with, with the job, my job and the nature of that job and just working in an, 
um, some intelligence and analysis and whatnot that I just didn't want to talk about some of the things that I was doing every day. So it, it's been an interesting dynamic over the years to see. But I guess I raise it to say, you know, my my coping has been, and this sort of uh, strategy is to be in high communication, but to still be self-attentive to, you know, what you're sort of, um, in being vulnerable, you're also asking other people to be vulnerable too. So mm -hmm. I try to be mindful of that. But I think, you know, sometimes just saying it out loud is a big first step, um, you know, to, to take in the next steps, I guess. You know, I don't know if that, if that gives you perspective at, at all too. Yeah, so um, the opposite of, of uh, what did you say, high... Co um, high communication. High, guess, high yeah. communication yeah. is keeping everything to yourself. Right. Um, so that's how I started coping <laughs> when I was uh, um, initially an entrepreneur, and I found every way possible to sedate the pain that I felt <laughs> on a daily basis because I didn't... I didn't, it was too much to bear. So it had to go somewhere, otherwise I felt like it was gonna break me eventually. So initially that started with you know, having, a, having a cocktail and taking the edge off before I you know, went home. Then I realized, hey, that's not really working for me. So then it was, I'm gonna do crazy long endurance events when I've had a really crappy day. I'm gonna go run until I can't feel anything. Yeah. That's still some, that's a form of sedation at the end of the day, which was slightly better than drinking, but it still didn't give me what I wanted, which was a release and you know to feel, feel not alone. Um, and I have, I have found uh, many different you know, things that work for me. Um, I did join a program called Wake Up Warrior uh, that has given me a lot of systems and insights and mainly just a forum uh, of other men, it's specifically a men's program of uh, entrepreneurs that were going through some of the same struggles and just recognizing that I wasn't alone and then learning how to be vulnerable and accept that it's okay to not be okay mm -hmm. was huge for me. That then created the space where at home I can eventually, I learned how to be in high communication at home with my wife and my family. But for me, it, it took me a while to get to that place because of my pride, my ego, not wanting to feel like a failure. And I had a lot of weaknesses or stories, the cracks, like I said, that were childhood related. That made me, I was afraid to be, not be perfect. You know, mm -hmm. I thought I had to be perfect to be successful. That makes it really difficult to be an entrepreneur because nobody's perfect in anything that you do. And then you don't want to share your imperfections, which then creates more loneliness. Uh, for me, I agree with Danny and the more high communication you have and in many places as possible, that's important. If you're not at that space, just being aware that you're not at that space is also yeah. important. Yeah, because sometimes it takes a while to get there, I guess, right? What we're saying, would you agree with that? Yeah. With, without a doubt. Yeah. So I, I think with, with that, it, um, you know, I think that we just have to think about what do you do then during that time? You know, so I, I, you know, I don't know the answer for everybody. For me, it's funny that you mentioned the running because I started doing that too. And I started training for half marathons because I was 30 pounds overweight. I was sedating a little bit too. But then you get in a better routine and flow. But I think there's also things, these coping mechanisms outside of just the individual. There's going to be people in your life that recognize it. Don't shoo them away. You know, take that as a sign or a signal like you said, kind of just the awareness that you're there. Um, but there's also some really positive coping strategies too. Like, you know, there's self-care and self-compassion, but you can go on an adventure and you can change your, your atmosphere and environment and that will change the mindset, right? So a lot of entrepreneurship is doing things that you really don't want to do sometimes. And if you want to get better at that, um, it's not just a mental coping strategy, but you're gonna to have to do that on a daily basis anyway. That's the assumption. You're gonna to have to get through things that you don't wanna do. And sometimes you're gonna do it with people you love. And part of it also is sometimes you're gonna do it with people that you don't exactly wanna do it with them, this project, this initiative, but you get through that. And I think that's uh, also a healthy perspective to have. Awesome. So to wrap up the conversation, uh, my final question to you guys is, as entrepreneurs, what advice would you give aspiring young entrepreneurs that are getting ready to launch a product off the ground? What are some things that you guys would suggest for them and advice that you can give? 
Um, I think that, I mean, there's obviously lots of uh, tactical yeah. advice that you should have mm -hmm. uh, from starting a business, uh, recognizing that it's probably going to be a lot harder than you think yeah. it is. It's probably a good place to start. Mm -hmm. uh, there's always somebody that uh, in your life you can talk to or reach out to in today's day and age with social media and the way we can connect with people. I would reach out to people that have done it before. The if you speak to an, any entrepreneur, they have their own struggle story. They can give you the, the pointers, the, the things to look for. And just being self-aware, you know, there's a certain piece of, of cockiness that's good and confidence that's good that you, you have to have a bit of an ego to go into business because you, you have to think you can do it and you have to believe in yourself and your belief in yourself is important. But don't let that blind you. Recognize that you you don't know as much as you don't know and you know the more you recognize that hey i don't know a lot but i can go and find out what i need to know the more humble you are from the beginning the more open minded you are the more successful you will be doesn't mean that you can't be successful but you probably don't know as much as you think you know until you've actually been through the experiences so the sooner you can ask for advice the sooner you can put yourself in uncomfortable situations to learn how you handle that stress um, and just learn about yourself self is huge when it comes to entrepreneurship you at the end of the day if you're not good within yourself every weakness you have is going to come up so uh, it's a huge i'm excited about the topic that we're discussing because mindset and your well-being is what comes first you come first in your business in your life and without taking care of you you're gonna have a difficult time taking care of your business yeah be the king and queen right yeah in a sense i think um it's i'm happy you covered sort of more of the strategic stuff because i was going to start with the tactical uh, I think, you know, it's somewhat with this advice, by the time you get to this point where you're thinking about, okay, I want to do something, you've already observed something that, you know, needs fixing, right? Or it's a problem, so you, you want to solve that. Or you're super passionate about, you know, one thing, right? One area, sports generally, or maybe it's, you know, you want to build a sports app, or maybe you want to build you know, or make the next greatest basketball. I, I don't know exactly what that is, but, you know, if it's not sports, it's something else. Or maybe it's sort of just um, a risk or a chance that you're taking, or maybe even a mistake, something you didn't want to do, but you stumbled upon this mm -hmm. and you thought, okay, this is something that I can do. So if you're at that point and you want to move forward, I would say you have to focus on one thing only. Right. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I always I always joke and, and Franco and I have talked about this, too, is like when you walk in the Starbucks, most people don't walk in to buy the Starbucks coffee mug. You walk in the Starbucks to buy coffee. Right. Mm -hmm. So what's that experience look like? What's that that life cycle and flow? What's that in engagement? You know, what are the elements of that? So whatever the next step is for you, you have to start to get down what the one contribution or capability is to the school, if you're going to make it for Iona, if it's going to be for community, if it's going to be for industry and market and et cetera, so on and so forth. And if you focus on the one contribution, that usually becomes, you know, Instagram now is integrated to Facebook, but it started with you post a picture and you have a filter. Like it's one main thing. So. I don't want you to lose sight of that, and I want you to go hard and really super, super deep on the one thing. Um, and everything that Franco was saying about the higher level, reach out to people then, interview them, mm -hmm. get more perspective. It's only going to help with the one thing. And some people start doing the one thing, and they realize, I don't want to do this anymore. And that, so you shouldn't do more of that one thing. You should find out what, what the thing is. So. Um, I think it, it sounds like it's simple, but it's actually the, the hardest thing in the world to do if, if, uh, if you think about it. So. Uh, along those lines, just uh, to add, because you know, you, what you're saying is, you know, also is so valid in paying attention to, to the facts. The, you the know, facts, being yeah. honest yeah. You know, with and, and not being caught up in the feelings. So that's, and what I mean by that is you might be emotionally attached to the idea, but if you actually brutally looked at what do the numbers tell you? What do the facts tell you? What, is, what has been done in the past? There's research. Don't ignore 
the truth because you're married to the feelings and the emotions behind it. And that goes to every aspect of business, you know, know your numbers, you know, there's t lots of tactical things you can do. Your numbers don't lie to you, you know, but we get caught up in the feelings behind what we think we can do. And oh, I'm not going to pay attention to this thing that's obvious over here is be honest with yourself and be honest with the feedback that you get and utilize that and be humble enough that the facts don't lie. You know, that's that's a huge thing that you just made me think of too. I love it, I love it. All right, well, Danny, uh, Franco, thank you very much. That was an awesome session. Um, and now it's a busy time at Gale Ventures, so we got a quick Gale breakdown. So Lily, you wanna take us away? Definitely, so the Iona Innovation Challenge is in full force. Our kickoff event is happening February 8th at 10 a.m. at Gale Ventures, um, 748 North Ave. And, if you and uh, we also have a couple of workshops coming up. So if you have a uh, trouble um, coming up with an idea, we have our Problem Need Identification Workshop with Liz Gallo. That's Tuesday, February 12th. That's from noon to 1 p.m. Mm -hmm. So if you need help um, discovering a problem worth solving, Design thinking is a design methodology that provides a solution-based approach to solving problems. Mm -hmm. Attend this workshop to, to find out methods of problem discovery. So if you need help finding a problem to solve for your own innovation challenge idea, that's a great place to start with Liz. And then on Thursday, February 14th, so two days after that, we have our ideation session with Philip Marchetti from noon to one, that's February 14th at Gale Ventures. And um, basically, once you've identified a problem, you can go to this workshop to learn techniques to generate your ideas quickly and sharing them with your potential users. We'll cover how to identify user traits, needs, scenarios, and how these I can drive idea generation and concept testing with users. And if you want more information on how to get into the challenge or those um, workshops, uh, iona.edu slash innovation challenge. That's where you can find all your information on signing up and getting involved. Again, that's Iona. In dot edu slash innovation challenge and definitely check us out on our social media at Heinz Institute and come join us at co-working we have co-working hours on Tuesday from 3 30 to 5 p.m. Wednesdays from 1 to 3 and on Fridays from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. and co-working is basically a space where you get to create what you want from it you can come and get, come ahead and come discuss your ideas or your potential ideas with um, the people that's around and collab with peers um, so yeah uh, again, Danny, Franco, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. That was awesome. We actually and, uh, have this for you guys. This all right. Is <coughs> yeah, We're that proud. Yeah, so Heinz, this is two hats. Thank right? you, very, thank <laughs> you awesome. very much. Thank you. We are very on. thankful for you guys for being here. The insights that you guys shared with our um, audience, it's very insightful. And yeah. Awesome. And thank you for tuning in. So yeah. signing off. Yeah. Uh, signing off. Hey, hey, we really work in Gale Ventures, the spot. Bert and May got the podcast hot. We innovating, no debating, we creating. I own innovators and I lane never hating. We just worry about us and what we do. I own innovation podcast show, get in tune.